26 cents per watt hour is about the cheapest I've ever seen. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the AFRI P310 power station. It has a 3600 watt capacity and it's got 3840 watt hours of battery available to you. And those batteries are lithium iron phosphate batteries at a 48 volt system. It will take up to 1500 watts at a time from the wall socket and it will take up to 2000 watts of solar. And while all of that is really cool, I had two things that I was primarily concerned about. A, can I run the AC unit in my RV from this unit and how fast is that going to deplete the battery? And my second concern was, if I wanted to take this thing out and work portable with it, say for a couple of days, is it going to produce any noise on the bands that I've got to be concerned about? And I'll answer both of those questions in just a second. But first, let's take a look around the rest of this box. On the back of the unit, we've got the light. If we open this panel right here, you'll see that we've got the AC input, the solar input, and the circuit breaker for this unit. Below that, we've got a couple of extra battery ports, and if we connect two extra batteries to this, we would get a total of 11,520 watt hours. On the front of the unit, we have a very nice display that gives us all of the information right there. It'll tell you how much time is remaining depending on what your current draw is from the unit. It gives you the battery percentage remaining. It'll tell you the input and the output so it will register in watts how much is coming in or how much is going out or both at the same time. Right below that, in the center, we've got the USB section. This gives us three 20-watt USB-C ports and one 100-watt USB-C port. We also have a couple of USB-A ports. This unit comes in at just under 100 pounds, but with the telescoping handle, and the nice wheels that they put on it, it's not too terribly bad to move it around. However, when you start to pick it up and put it on one of these tables, you might want to have two people to do it. Now, one of the things unique to this unit that I haven't seen on other units is this dial right on the front that allows us to select how much power is going to be input into this at one time. So that is selectable between 300, 600, 900, 1200, and 1500 watts. Usually you have to go into an app to be able to change that, but AFRI has put that right on the front of the unit so it's easy and quick to change. Below that, we've got the DC section where we've got a 12 volt, 10 amp power socket. We've got two 12 volt, 3 amp, 5521 ports. And we've got this one 12 volt, 25 amp XT60 port. Right below that, we've got the standard four AC ports and the one 30 amp AC port. And that's the plug we're going to use to power the RV. Hopefully you guys can read the display. We do have 100% remaining. So let's go ahead and turn on this AC circuit right here. And looks like it is on. And now let's go ahead and turn on the AC in the RV. Real quick before we get to that, it is 80 degrees in the RV right now. Now, it's not terribly warm today. It's about 75 degrees right now, but it is November, and that's just the time frame that I've got to test this. But I want to go ahead and turn the AC unit on and bring this down to about eh, maybe 65 or 68 degrees and just see how much power we consume out of that battery unit. All right, so it looks like we're pulling just over 1,000 watts, maybe 1,060. We're at 100%. It says we've got three hours to go. I'm going to check on this in about 30 minutes, and I'll report back. So after 30 minutes, we're down to 89% on the battery, still drawing about 1,150 watts right now. I know the AC unit in the camper is still running, but let's go check and see what that temperature is. All right, so hopefully you guys can make that out. We are just above 70 degrees right now, so we're going to let this run for another 30 minutes and check back. Okay, so it's been almost another 30 minutes. That timer should be going off here in any second now. We're still drawing about 135 watts. That tells me that the fan is running, but the compressor on the AC is not. You can see we still got 78% uh, left there on the battery. There's the alarm going off. And we're down to that 68 degree mark. I'm going to call that a big success. Now I'm super pleased with the results of that RV test. 
Let's see, though, if this thing is going to produce any RFI. I've just got the 705 sitting here, and I have a signal stick antenna right on the back of it, and it's pointed so it's running right down beside the unit there. Now, I have the DC portion of this box turned on at this particular moment, and you'll see that we're basically getting nothing across the waterfall. But keep in mind, I don't have the radio connected to the unit, so this, the 705 is just running off of its internal power pack. Let's go ahead and kick on that AC portion, and let's see what happens on the waterfall. And that's what I was afraid of. We're on 40 meters, but you can see we are definitely getting some noise on that radio. So let's see if I can bring that in a little closer. And you can see that pulsing noise on 40 meters. Let's go ahead and just check 80 meters for the fun of it. And we're seeing the same thing on 80 meters. We'll go ahead and check 20 meters real quick. And yeah, it looks like it's pretty much across every single band that we are getting those pulses out of this particular power station. And that is coming in at about S5 on the meter. All right, so now I have the power station uh, only powered on the main, uh, the main circuitry in it. The USB, the DC, and the AC is all powered off. Let's go ahead and connect this power cable from the 12 volt side to the radio and you'll see that that is introducing a tremendous amount of noise for us s9 on the unit let's go ahead and check a couple of other bands here we'll check out uh, 80 meters and it's not terrible we do have some lines coming down the waterfall there so there is some noise there let's go ahead and try 40 meters and you'll see that we've got more on 40 meters and let's go ahead and check 20 meters real quick and I think that's enough to give us an idea that this is not going to be the best thing to connect your radio directly to and try to use the power station as your primary power supply during maybe field day weekend. Now, on one hand, I think it's a little bit ridiculous to take a 705 and power it with a power station that's this large. But it is sad to see that we can't get clean power out of this thing that won't produce any RFI. Now, I also suspect that if we move this power station a little bit further away from our radios, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Remember, I had the antenna sitting right beside this unit. Uh, but if you connect that power uh, cord to the radio from the power station, well, it looks like we're just going to be stuck with that RFI. Now, that's not really where I plan to use this unit. My primary use case for this is going to be to power the RV itself and then run the radios off of a separate lithium iron phosphate battery. What I would really like to do is have this along with the two additional batteries sitting in the back of my truck so that I could run the RV for an extended period of time off of this power station. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.